Father, for the preaching hour and the songs of Zion, stir our hearts one more time this side of heaven. And we'll love you and thank you for all that you do. In Christ's name we pray. And the people of God say it. Amen. Give the Lord praise as you can see all over the house.
So uh, thank you for getting up and setting your clock and all that. Nowadays, you just got to lie just about. Because your phone changes and everything changes overnight. Uh, all on automatic, on autopilot. Uh, it does it. So uh, I forgot to ch change my clock, preacher. We got the altars will be open right in now. <laughs> thank you for coming. What a joy it is to be here. Um, let's do this today. Uh, there's a song uh, that they sing. I don't know who did it, but they took an old hymn and added just a little bit to it. Uh, one that we all know, and it, it says, Just as I am. I'm glad that I didn't have to go get cleaned up. I didn't go have to take out a loan. I didn't have to do all this checklist of things before I could come to it. But I came to him just like I was. Probably my favorite verse, one verse in the Bible is this. Romans 5 and verse number 8. But God commended his love toward us in that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. He saw you and he saw me in our lowest state. He saw us with all the nasty about us. But he loved us anyway. And I say bless his name. I listen while they sing this morning. Thank you. 
thankful that, as the preacher said, that I didn't have to get fixed up before I got fixed up. And I remember coming broken. And I'm thankful that he don't just mend me when I got saved. But I'm glad that he's continued to mend me my mind and my heart. Can we all stand all over the house today as we worship the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords? And if you're here and you're, you've been mended, you've got something to worship about. If you're saved in the building, my, 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 you have something to worship God for. If you're able to come to church this morning in your right mind, my, you've got something to worship God for. We are so thankful that He saved us. Can I get a witness in the building?
says that he's a way maker. Uh, you know, there's a lot of us that's been brought through some stuff. And there's a many of us that's been brought out of some stuff. And I believe we can all testify that he's a way making God. He makes a way where there seems to be no way. When you feel like 
that everything's over and it's just all done. I'm glad even when he's four days late, he's still on time. He's still calling dead things back to life again. He's making ways. He's a miracle worker. He's a God that knows where you're at. He's a God that'll take you out. He's a God that'll bring us through. Let's worship him.
Uh, you may be seated. Jane, come up here for a second. Drop that guitar. Come on up here. The Bible said be ready always. Amen. Jane, come on out here. You're going to give me two minutes on how God can take you through the fire. Amen. Well, whenever you say that, all I can think about is the book of David. When the Bible says that there was three that were thrown into the fire. Yep. Mm -hmm. But then the Bible also says that there was another that was there with them. Yep. And I'm so thankful that in my life there's been many times whenever I've been in trials and troubles and it looks like I was just in there all by myself. People would think that I was going through it all by myself. <coughs> but I'm so thankful that there's always been a God who's been there with me, that's always been ever present, that has never left me, he's never forsaken me, he's always been there with me through it all. And sometimes life's challenges get so hard, and the Bible also refers to fires as just as just trials and just tribulations, and you know, he never promised that this life was going to be easy. If anything, he promised us that it was going to be hard. Mm -hmm. He promised us that there was going to be trials, that there was going to be troubles, that there was going to be persecution. He said as the day draws closer and closer to his coming, that things would get harder and harder. Oh. And I see that in my life. I've seen life get hard. And I've seen life get challenging. I tell the youth all the time on Wednesdays that the older you get, the more responsibility you get, the harder life's going to get. Uh -huh. And how many of y'all can say that's true? Oh, but I'm so thankful that he didn't end it there. But he promised that he'd always be there with us. And he promised that he'd take care of us and that he'd supply all of our needs according to his riches and glory. He promised that he could do exceedingly, abundantly above yeah. all that we could ever ask or think. And I'm glad that that's my God. He doesn't just meet my needs. He supersedes my needs. I'm glad he doesn't just take care of me, but he takes care of me in ways that I never thought possible. I'm glad he's not the God who just built a bridge for the army of Israel to cross over, but I'm glad he's the God that dries up the sea. He doesn't just answer things the way we think he can. He answers things in ways we never thought he ever could. And that's why he is my God. Amen. Y'all listen, let's worship. Wait up. 
with us, if you will, find your Bible and look at Luke chapter 13 uh, as the children are uh, heading over next door. Uh, Luke chapter number 13. And we'll see what the Lord has for us. And thank you, Miss Rebecca, for helping us today. The candy lady is, uh, uh, she's going to get them all jacked up on sugar and send them home with you. Amen. That's what we like to do. Uh, Luke chapter 13. And uh, we'll see what the Lord has for us here uh, this morning. Uh, thank you again for helping us out. Uh, with the music, always do a wonderful job there. Uh, Luke chapter 13. We were having some issues, and right now, apparently, I'm having another issue. Uh, hallelujah. Uh, Luke chapter 13. Uh, we have all kinds of electronical issues today. Here we go. Uh, and, but the Lord's still good. Amen. 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 All right, here we are. Luke 13 and verse number 1. Uh, the Bible said, there were present at that season uh, some that told him of the Galileans, whose blood Pilate had mingled with their sacrifices. Jesus answering said unto them, suppose ye that these Galileans were sinners above all the Galileans, because they suffered such things. I tell you, nay, but except ye repent, ye shall all likewise perish. That's a message that needs to be preached in our pulpits all over this land today. The, the message of repentance. Amen. Jesus thought enough of it. Notice here. I or of those 18 upon the tower in Siloam fell and slew them. Think ye that they were sinners above all men that dwelt in Jerusalem? Jesus is talking about some current events that have, have happened and he's likening them and their questions uh, to do they think they're better than these people and he said nay twice I tell you but except you repent you shall all likewise perish verse number 16 goes right into what we call the parable of the fig tree he spake also this parable of a certain man had a fig tree planted in his vineyard. And he came and sought fruit thereon and found none. And then said he unto the dresser of his vineyard, Behold, these three years I come seeking fruit on this fig tree and find none. Cut it down. Why cumbereth it the ground? And he answered and said unto him, Lord, let alone this year also, till I shall dig about it and dung it, and if it bear fruit well, and if not, then after that thou shalt cut it down. Look in verse eight, number 8 again. The Bible said, he answering, this is the husband of I said unto him, Lord, let it alone this year also, till I shall dig about it and dung it. Can you just see this man that has uh, spent some time tending uh, to this uh, vineyard, if you will, the, uh, this uh, area, the, these, these fig trees, and he's asking the owner of the vineyard, just give me one more year. Just, we just need one more year. Father, in Jesus' name, I ask you, God, that you touch us and help us. Lord, I need you. We need you in this place, in this hour. God, touch every person. May we have Holy Spirit here in this place. Lord, I realize there's only so much that I can say and so much that I can do. Uh, but Lord, I know you can go far beyond what my words are and what my words say. And God, you can do way down deep in our heart things that only you can do. I thank you, God, for all you have done. And Lord, what you're going to do in this place in this hour, we ask these things in Jesus' name. God's people said, 
Amen. 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 You may be seated. As we get to look here in this story, it's an interesting little parable. Uh, Jesus often shared parables. Parables were simply an earthly illustration that showed a heavenly truth. Uh, Jesus did it often, and uh, uh, preachers uh, often use illustrations. I like to use good illustrations uh, when I can. Uh, but uh, we, we read about this man that uh, uh, where the owner of the vineyard has come uh, to him, and he, the owner, has planted the seeds. He's planted all of these fig trees in this area, and he's chosen that area for them to be planted in. He chose uh, that soil for them to be put in, and now uh, in three years' time, uh, he's come back and he's checked on them. Uh, possibly he could have come every year. I, I'm not sure, but I, we do know he's come on the third year. And the uh, the husbandman there, uh, the dresser of the vineyard said, let's come back next year and let's see what's happening. And some of you may be wondering, why am I making so much about this? And let me under help you understand why. Uh, because God is the type of of the owner of the, of the uh, when this in this parable, God is the owner of this vineyard. God's the owner of this land here. He's the one that done the planting. Uh, Jesus Christ is the dresser of the vineyard, and the and those fig trees, especially this fig tree, is the nation of Israel, but also can be looked at as you and I. And so, for three years, uh, he's uh, he has worked on this land. How long was Jesus on this earth? Uh, doing his earthly ministry for three years. Uh, and for three years he did a, a, a public ministry trying to reach the nation of Israel. I also found it interesting that a fig tree will bud, a fig tree you can expect it uh, to bring forth fruit on the third year. Jesus knew just exactly what he was talking about uh, when he gave this illustration. By the way, if you ever read the Bible and you find something wrong, something's wrong with you. Yeah. Yeah. Hallelujah. Still, I still believe I got a perfect book. Amen. I still believe I can trust his word. Amen. Uh, so I began to think about this and uh, I, I read behind some, some folk and and uh, I want to share some things that I learned as I studied through this. And, uh, one thing that I found out is you don't choose the soil. You don't choose the pain. You don't choose the problems. You don't choose the difficulties or the challenges where God plants you. He plants us in a particular area, in a particular soil, and he knows what it's going to require for that soil and for that fruit to be able uh, to bring forth and to see something to happen and to, to for it to uh, to prosper. And so I began to, to, to look at this story and there's a lot of us that have been through some stuff. There's a lot of us that are praying and begging and believing that this year is the year our marriage turns around. This year is the year our children uh, get back involved with us. This year's the year our children get right with God. This year's the year uh, that our child or our loved one gets off of dope. Uh, this year is the year uh, that that thing uh, that we've been begging God and believing God for finally happens. And can I say this? Uh, I just still believe uh, that there's some folk in this, in this room uh, that this is your year. Uh, this is the year that God's going to show himself real in your life. Uh, we begin to, to study there and begin to look and uh, there's a whole lot of us that may be weary. You're carrying broken dreams, broken promises, and everything else, and you're thinking, can I make it? I want to encourage you. Can you give God just one more year? Can you believe God just a little further? Can you, as, as Jesus 
Uh, the, the, the type of the, the husbandman here was talking to the owner of the vineyard and said, I don't, I don't cut it down now. If you remember when John came, what did he say? He said, I am laid, the, the axe is laid to the root of the tree. He was ready. He said, bring forth fruit, meat for repentance. And uh, he was ready to lay that axe down. But Jesus said, hold up, not just right now. Can you give him just a little bit more? Amen. Aren't you glad there's a God that loves you? There's a God that sees that you might not be there just now, but there's just, hallelujah, it's just around the bend. It's just a little bit more, and you're going to be where you need to be with God. Amen. Amen. <laughs> ah. Now notice this. thought this is interesting. In the story there, he said, uh, hold on. Don't cut that tree down. He said, uh, and that's why you know it's a type of Jesus. When the wrath, when the judgment was about to fall on the tree, he put himself in the middle of it. He said, not just yet. Put all that on me. I'm going to tend to it. I'm going to work it. And then you come back in a year, and if it hadn't happened, then we can cut it down. Aren't you glad that Jesus uh, stood up? Uh, the Bible said in Revelation, there stood a lamb uh, in the uh, uh, land that was slain uh, before the foundation of the earth uh, when nobody else could uh, and nobody else would. Uh, I opened the seals of the book. Uh, there was a lamb that stood up uh, and there was a lamb uh, uh, that would go to, uh, to Calvary uh, for you and I. I would uh, bleed all of his life's blood uh, and give everything uh, for you uh, and for me. That's my Jesus this morning uh, and I'm glad that he loves me. Amen. Uh, so we begin to look at that and study through that. Some of you feel like quitting. You feel like it's never going to change. You'll never break free from the addiction. You never get where you need to be. Things will never get right. We may want it. Hallelujah. <laughs> I told you having all kinds of problems. Y'all just stick with us. Amen. We'll shut it all down and I'll just preach old fashioned if I have to. Uh, you may feel like that the soil is the problem. Well, preacher, we're coming out of the pandemic. The soil is the problem. There's troubles everywhere. There's wars and rumors of wars. Have you seen the price of gas? Have you seen the price of meat? Have you seen the price of this and the price of that? I don't care if gas gets to five dollars a drop. God still owns the cattle on a thousand hills and he's able to take care of his children. So I want to tell you don't quit. Don't give up. Don't give out. He may have to do a little work on me. He may have to do a little work on you. Notice, if you will, verse number eight. The Bible teaches us there. Said he, he said, let it alone this year till I shall dig about it. Now, I'm not a farmer. I, 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 I try to, I, I like to, to catch my fish with hush puppies and tartar sauce on the side. I like to get my, uh, I like to get my vegetables and fruit cold and clean uh, at, the, at the grocery store. And I don't even know where a little Debbie lives, uh, but I like them too. Amen. <laughs> but I, I found, as I studied a little bit around this, that one thing that they would do whenever there was problems in the fruit production is that they would take and dig around the roots. Dig and clean out around the root system. Now, Jay, when they would do that, there would be some discomfort from all that it had gotten accustomed to. Uh, they would remove some things. No doubt in that process, uh, some small things would have to be cut away. 
and remove. How many of you like when God starts removing things? We don't. We don't like that at all. But for God to get us where he wants us, he may have to dig around us. He may have to dig among us. He might have to do some work down deep. Yeah. We look at a tree and we look at something and all we see is what's on top side. All we see is the pretty leaves or the, or, or the fruit or whatever. We barely even take, take notice that there's a root system underneath there that's supporting all that, that's creating all that. Too many times in life, we fix up this old shell of flesh that we have best we can. We, we brush them teeth, hallelujah. You ought to brush your teeth, amen. Don't come to church and not have and brush your teeth, amen. Uh, I mean, just be a blessing to everybody else. Go ahead and put your right guard on and your left guard too. Ah, yeah. uh, uh, But we try to take care of ourselves, present ourselves as best as we can, presentable as we can. But how often do we think about what's down deep? What's going on in the root system? We ought to ask God. Now, Lord, I know it may hurt. And I might not like it, but if there's something in me, I want you to dig and deal with those things that are down deep. There's some of you right now that the reason you cannot move forward in your life is because there's bitterness in your heart. There's some of us right now, the reason we can't move forward in our life is because there's bondage to some sin. There's some area in our life that we simply will not let go and let God have his way. And we, we sit and shake our fist and say, God, why are you not hearing my prayer? And we know why. We know why. He's dealt with us over and over and over again. Oh, God, dig down deep. Don't worry, we're gonna get we're gonna get somewhere good in just a minute, but we gotta deal with this. He may dig around you. We don't want him to tear things up. We don't want him to tear up the environment that we've uh, made ourselves so comfortable in. Uh, we don't want uh, uh, for things to be turned uh, upside down, topsy turvy. We don't want all those things to happen. But for him to get us where we need to be this year, he may have to dig around us. Let me, let me just be real and with you. As a pastor, I love people. I love more people. I love it when every week we have more people and more people. But I've learned something over these many years that there's sometimes God has got to do some pruning. God's got to do some digging out. I hate, it, it hurts me when people leave for whatever reason. I, 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 I hate that. But I have learned that my, my father is wiser than I am. By the way, he's wiser than you are too. You might be a wise guy, but you ain't wiser than my daddy. Amen. He knows just exactly what, uh, who he needs. And he knows exactly what he's doing. He may dig around your life. I'm going to say something very personal here. I didn't even talk to her about it, but back in 2017, my dad passed. And that shocked us as a family. We weren't expecting it at all. And uh, just dealt with that as best we could. My mom still dealing with it. We are as well. But her more so. But it wasn't before the end of that year, it was November of that year, that through all that, Christ spoke to her heart. And she gave her heart to him. I 
I don't know why God did what, what he did, but I am thankful that through it, he made, he made a change in her life. Made a change in us. I've learned a whole lot of stuff around it. And God has helped me through it. I didn't like it all the time. But he done some digging in my life. Has he done any digging around your life? Has he dug around and maybe nicked a root somewhere? Maybe laid bare something that was covered up? He's saying, if we're going to get where we need to get in one more year, we'll have to get this problem solved. But we ain't never going to see no fruit. Now, let me, let, me, let me rewind to last week. Last week we talked about the soon coming of the Lord, the uh, what does the Bible say about end time events and all that? We talked about uh, how Israel was uh, called the, uh, the, the fig tree bud. And Jesus uh, gave, uh, gave a parable about that as well. And it said that when you saw the fig tree bud, you know that it's the right season. Now, I don't, I don't you dare misunderstand what I'm going to say here. I'm not telling you that Jesus is coming back in one year. He could come back in one day. It might be 10 years, it might be 100 years, I don't know. And nobody else does either. But I'm telling you this, what if we only have one year? What if this is the last year? Wouldn't you want God to deal with some stuff today so that by the end of the year, when he comes back, we will have done everything we could do to reach as many as we could? I don't know about you, but I don't like the idea of people dying and going to hell. I don't like the idea of people dying and burning in the devil's hell. I don't like the idea that somebody uh, would die and be without God, without Christ. I don't like any of that. I don't like none of that. But I'm glad to say, hallelujah, there's a God in heaven. He don't like it either. And the Bible said this, it is not God's will that any should perish, but that all come to repentance. God wants to save everybody, but sadly not everybody will. What we need to do in the church, John, just watch whatever is bumping up on the sound system there. Unplug it if you got to, all right? Um, what we need to do as the church in 2022, what we need to do is figure out, God, is there something wrong in my life that's keeping me from being everything I can, from having the touch and the power and the anointing of God on my life. Let me ask you this. I've got, I'm, I'm, I'm going to, Lord help me. I've got to get to the end of this, but I, I, I've got to stay right here for a minute. Has there ever been a time in your life that you had the power of God? Was there, has there ever been a time in your life that you knew you had God on you and God in you? And there was something that was different in that revival season. In that time you were so close to him. Now let me ask us all a question. What happened? What went wrong? What's missing? What's in our life that needs to be done? Out of our life. He may dig you. He may done you. He answered and said to him, Lord, let alone this year also, till I shall dig about it and dung it. Now we all know, I think, we all know what dung is. Fertilizer. Animal. Refuse. Cow patties. Uh, are, we getting, are we getting plain enough right there? Ah, uh, stinky, nasty stuff. And we we don't like the nasty, do we? We don't like the stinky things that happen, do we? But for us to get where we need to go, 
this year. God may very well need to dig us and to dung us. You say, preacher, what do you mean? The word dung is only found twice in the New Testament. The other time, Paul is writing to the church at Philippi, and he says this, Yea, doubtless, I count all things but loss for the excellency of the knowledge of Christ Jesus, my Lord, for whom I have suffered the loss of all things, and do count them but done, that I may win Christ. Now, I've read that verse, and I believe the, the, the proper context of the verse, Brother John, uh, probably means that everything that he has attained, all the, uh, the, the accolades that he has, he counts them but refuse. He counts them but trash, but dung before him. But I got to thinking about what if, what if everything he went through was fertilizer to get him to what he was going to? What if God allowed the stinky and the nasty that we went through to be used to grow us into what we're going to? I think about old Paul there. Uh, Paul's been through a lot. He's been beaten with rods. He's been snake bit. He's been left for dead. He's been stoned, falsely imprisoned. He's been lied on. He's been run out of town. He's been tortured. But what if he said, I went through all of that, and that, hallelujah, that was just fertilizer to get me where I'm going. I'm growing in God, and I'm going to where he wants me to be. Somebody needs to go to church with me. Yeah. He said, just hold off a year till I dig about it, till I done it. He said, it's, Paul, I can just see him saying, what's been through on me, what's been cast on me, what's been tossed on me, didn't do nothing but fertilize me. He wrote half of the New Testament. He may not have been able to do it through any other soil except through how that God allowed the dung in his life. Now, I'm not signing up for it, Jay. I don't like it. But if God, in his sovereign knowledge, if God said, for me to get you where you need to be, I'm going to need to dig I'm going to need to dug. Who am I to talk to a sovereign God that knows the end from the beginning? Knows much better than you or I. I might not always like it, but in the end, it'll be, I'll be better for it. God will get glory out of it. You say, preacher, I thought you said you was going to. He, he may have to dig around you. He may have to dig among you. He may have to even throw some dung on you. But all that means, and all that is a simple sign that he is not done with you. Verse number seven. He said unto the dresser of the vineyard, Behold, these three years I come seeking fruit. I own this fig tree and find none. Cut it down. Why cumbereth it the ground? And he answered and said unto him, Lord, let it be let alone this year also. He said, I know you could cut it down and you'd be right in doing so. I know uh, that it's not showing any signs of improvement, but can you give it just a little more time? Can you give it 
just a little more in just another year. I'm glad, hallelujah, that whenever God could have and should have thrown me away when I should have been cut down and burned, I'm glad Jesus stood in the way and said, I see something in him. I see that he's worth dying for. And he bled and he died on Calvary so that I'd have another chance so that I could go to heaven when I die. Somebody needs to help me now. He may dig you, he may dug you, but he ain't, I said he ain't, done with you. It ain't over yet. You still got breath in your body. You're sitting here listening to the word of God preached. God loves you. God has a plan for you. God wants to turn things around in your life. You say, oh, but preacher, you don't understand. You don't understand what I've gone through. You don't understand what I, what's happened to me. You don't understand the mess of my life. I tell you this, that God allowed the mess so he could bring a message right out of your life. And he could tell this world, he is God, and beside him, there is no other. Amen. We we want things in the jiffy. We want things in the snap. Here uh, recently, Kelly got us one of them air fryers. If you ain't got an air fryer, you need one because things you have to put in the oven to cook forever. Air fryer, 10 minutes, boom, it's done. And uh, I'm liking that. She likes it too, because she don't, you don't have to cook in the butter and all that stuff. She she got me all the time, on, got me on a diet. I probably need to be on two diets just to get enough food anyway. <laughs> <laughs> but we want things in a hurry. But God don't always work in a hurry. God don't always work as fast as we want him to, as fast as we thought he should. But God has got a plan. I want you to stand with me all over the building. I, want, I wonder how many of us are in this room today that will say, God, I want to thank you and when everybody else gave up on me, you didn't. How many of us have come and say, God, I want to tell you, thank you, that you're not done with me yet. Here we come. Lord, I want to just bow and tell you one more time, thank you. I would have been done with me. Many would have been done, but you weren't. I thank you for that. Here we come. Lord, I thank you. Lord, I thank you even for the digging times. Maybe you're here today and say, Preacher, there's some things in my life that I need dug around, dug about. God, would you take us back to that first love when it was the first, oh, so precious and so wonderful. Oh, thank you, God, for your manifold mercies and grace toward us. Let's make it the best year that we've ever had. Oh, help us. Speak to us in this time. We thank you, God. While these are praying, you're here this morning say, Preacher, I know I'm saved, but I know I'm saved, but I'm not 
where I need to be. Here's my hand. Would we be honest and say, there's some things in my life that have got me sideways, got me messed up here and there. Here's my hand. Would you pray for me, preacher? We see those. We see those. Thank you for being honest. Maybe you're here today and say, preacher, I do not know that I'm saved. I do not know without a shadow of a doubt that I'm ready to meet Christ. Would you pray for me? Is there something like that? Here's my hand, preacher. I do not know I'm saved. Would you pray for me? <coughs> Father, thank you for mercies. Thank you, God, for grace in our heart and our life. I thank you, Lord, for all the things that you have done for us, in us. And Lord, help us. In this time, we have gathered here today. We love you and bless you. Speak to us. Use this for your glory. I ask in Jesus' name. Amen.